Okay. Um, so again, my name is Brooke Lejack. I'm the Livestock Advisor for um, Imperial Riverside and San Bernardino Counties. And today I'm going to talk about the poisonous plants of California. Um, so some of them will be weeds. A couple of them are actually forages, but I threw them in there because um, we've seen issues with them. And so it's just important to keep in mind. Uh, like Julie, I'm going to kind of run through this pretty quick. There's a lot of plants I want to cover. Um, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but I will give you resources on where you can go to learn more about them. So when we're, we're thinking about plant toxicity, um, the toxin and toxicity varies by plant species. So the dose determines the effect. Some you can, the animals can eat a lot and they may not be affected. They can eat a little and they may be very affected. And we'll talk about some of those really, really toxic plants. Um, but it also varies by species. Ruminants may be more affected. Monogastrics may be more affected. Um, they may have specific enzymes in their body that make it so they can digest those toxins better than maybe something else. Um, and a lot of toxic plants are unpalatable. Jo Julie mentioned this in hers. Um, so if if an animal's eating it, they may be just very hungry. Um, and the, there's one plant I'll talk about where uh, the way to kind of get around that is to feed them something else and then send them out so they're not so hungry um, out on that pasture. Okay, um, so looking at plant toxins, uh, I'm just gonna briefly go over all of them, but one of the big ones is the nitrate, nitrates and nitrites. And what happens is plants naturally have the nitrates uh, in the rumen, it gets broken down into nitrites, which typically would then be converted into ammonia, which then gets converted into microbial protein for the animal. The problem is, is at too high of, uh, concentration, there becomes too many nitrites, and then that gets absorbed into the bloodstream, and then it bonds with the hemoglobin, and then the, it can't carry oxygen. So that becomes an issue for, obviously, um, for animals. Um, and then um, the alkaloids can affect the liver, lung, kidney, and central no nervous system. Um, and, and so that, that's really important to keep an eye out for that. Um, tannins can become toxic uh, for several reasons, um, but eventually what it can lead to is kidney and liver diseases. Um, it could also disrupt digestion too, so they may just do very poorly if they have excessive uh, tannins. Um, and then we see glycosides, uh, which can affect the heart, um, which can lead to sudden death. Um, so it's really important to keep an eye on that um, and those plants that may lead to that. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know cyanide. It's, it's not good for humans. It's not good for livestock. It blocks the cellular respiration. Um, and so this can cause major issues with the animals. Oxalates um, can uh, eventually become, uh, an animal can become um, conditioned to eat it if you feed the animal little by little, um, so not in large doses because they, um, they create more microbes that break that oxalate down. Um, and then thiaminases, uh, it's an enzyme that breaks down vitamin B1. And vitamin B1 is important for uh, energy. So you'll see a lot of issues with that energy with muscle weakness and trembling because their energy uh, metabolism is messed up. So looking at livestock poisonings, um, the big one is oleander. And we'll talk about that more um, because it's an important one because it is so toxic. Um, but also nitrates coming in on a second, and that's, that's also very important. Um, so I'm just going to run through these. I have them um, organized by toxin. So we'll start with the cyanides. Uh, so this is choke cherry. Uh, you'll see the white flower there. Um, and this grows along streams and damp areas. You'll see it in woody, brushy areas. Um, and it affects cattle, sheep, horses, and goats, and humans. Um, and so even the wilted leaves, leaves are still toxins. So um, leaving them out where they're grazing isn't a good idea because it, that toxicity doesn't go away. Okay, um, so Larkspur uh, is an alkaloid. Um, cattle are more susceptible, but goats are just typically affected by the tall Larkspur. So tall Larkspur is gonna be found in the moist areas and low Larkspur is gonna be in dry open areas. 
Um, and this can cause bloat, which obviously can be an issue, and then lack of coordination. Uh, death chemis uh, is an alkaloid toxin um, affecting cattle, sheep, horses, and goats. It grows in moist, grassy areas. Um, you'll notice a pretty obvious flower there. Um, and that can cause symptoms of salivation, staggering, sudden death. Um, but it is a member of the lily family. Um, next, we have uh, local weed. Um, and this is, it's called local weed because it can make the animals act a little bit of crazy. Um, so it's an alkaloid, uh, toxin, but it can also, uh, take up selenium. And as Julie mentioned, that can lead to selenium toxicity. Um, so this affects cattle, sheep, horses, and goats, grows in dry open areas, um, and can cause the excitability that causes that name. Um, toxicity does differ based on growth. Um, so uh, at different stages of growth, it will have different toxicities. Poison hemlock is another alkaloid. Um, it affects cattle, sheep, horses, goats, and humans and grows in low areas less than 5,000 feet. Um, it can cause birth defects, nervousness, and weakness, but it does lose its toxicity when it dries out. So we go to ragwort and groundsel, um, which are both alkaloids. Um, and they affect goat, sheep, horses, cattle, sheep, goats, horses, and humans. Uh, the habitat is variable, it grows all over the place. Um, I did, I tried to pick uh, poisonous plants that I saw in multiple areas of the state. So that's why um, you know, this, is, this one is all over the state. Uh, and can cause a loss of appetite and weight loss. Um, and the plants are poisonous, fresh and dried. So there's no safe way for the animals to eat them. Sheep and goats aren't as affected as cattle and horses for this one. We have milkweed next, which is a, a glycoside um, affecting cattle, sheep, horses, goats, and humans. It lives in dry places less than 7,000 feet. Um, and it can cause depression, pupil dilation, and seizures. Next, we have fiddle neck, uh, which is an alkaloid. Cattle and horses are going to be most affected for this one. Sheep and goats are going to be the least effective, affected. Um, and it's going to be in sandy open areas. Uh, and it's going to cause uh, weight loss and depressed appetite. So seeds and dried plant material are most uh, toxic. Any fiddle neck in hay is a concern and that's a pretty common way for animals um, to have toxicity is through contaminated feed and hay. So oaks are next. The toxin here is tannins um, affecting cattle, sheep, goats, and humans. Uh, it, they're all over the state um, causing bloody diarrhea, kidney failure, and sudden death. Goats do tolerate twice as much as cattle. Um, because can't, goats have a tannin binding protein in their saliva. So next is nightshades, which is an alkaloid um, affecting cattle, sheep, horses, goats, and humans. It lives all over the place um, and it can cause drowsiness, weakness, gastrointestinal upset. Um, and toxic varies from species to species. Um, and within the plant. So for example, unripe berries are more toxic than ripe berries. So next is dogbane, um, which is a cardiac glycoside. So again, that's affecting the heart. Um, cattle, sheep, horses, and goats are affected and it lives in moist areas. It's bitter, um, so it's usually not consumed um, uh, if, if given the option. Next is oleander. So like I mentioned, this is the big one. This is a cardiac glycoside, so it affects the heart and it affects cattle, sheep, horses, goats, and humans. Um, this is the big one because it is so toxic. The clippings are a primary cause of poisoning. These are typically um, an ornamental plant. So someone clipping their plants may feed it to their animal, um, but it doesn't take very much to kill an animal. Um, it takes about five to 10 medium sized leaves to be lethal to a horse or a cow. Um, so I, I, I think I read somewhere that for horses and cattle, 
it's about 0.005% of, um, of their body weight is what will kill them. So it does not take much. Um, so it's important when you're maybe feeding grass clippings um, or garden clippings that uh, you make sure that oleander is not included. Next is cocklebore, another glycoside um, affecting everything plus pigs. Um, living in disturbed moist places. Uh, and the toxins are concentrated in germinating plants. Um, and so it's usually um, consumed through hay or contaminated hay or gr grains. Um, curly dock is an oxalate, but it also accumulates nitrates which affects cattle and sheep and horses to some extent. Um, this is found on irrigated pastures and um, symptoms can appear within five hours of consumption, but there's no effective treatment for this one. And that's um, kind of a big issue. Some toxins do have a, a pretty simple uh, method to treat and some don't, and this is one that does not. Foxtail, um, so this does physical damage. Instead of a toxin, it does physical damage. Um, so it'll cause ulcerations and lesions to the mouth and tongue and the face area as they're eating. Horsetail is a thiaminase. Again, it, it breaks down that vitamin B1. Um, so it, easy treatment for this is just by giving thiamine to replace what's broken down. Um, so yellow star thistle. Um, the toxin is lactones, um, and it is an invasive weed. The next is uh, water hemlock. The toxin is an alcohol. All livestock and humans are affected by this. Um, it grows in wet marshy areas, and it is among the most poisonous plants in North America, and all parts of the plants are poisonous. And so now we get to maybe the not weedy part of um, this presentation, looking at the sorghums, um, which I'm including Sudans and sorghum Sudan um, hybrids, because they these are very susceptible to um, accumulating nitrates and cyanide compounds. Um, so prussic acid would be the cyanide compound for this one. And so it's important when you're feeding sorghums or if you're grazing a sorghum field or a Sudan grass field, um, that, uh, that uh, you pay attention um, to what may be toxic to your animals. So prussic acid and nitrates are more concentrated in young plants. So if you can graze older, um, larger plants, it's gonna be less concentrated. And then stressed plants or damaged plants are more likely to have these toxins. And then klein grass. Um, that's, this is a grass that, um, that's grown down here quite a bit, um, but it is not good for sheep, horses, or goats. Uh, it can be toxic and we've had some issues with that. Um, so just making sure uh, that when, when you're uh, feeding hay or grazing a field that it doesn't have climb grass if you have sheep or goats. And so there are, uh, there are a lot of poisonous plants. Uh, you can see here's just some more examples. Um, and I'll show you, uh, some different uh, places you can find uh, more and more information on these. Um, just a quick control measures, and I think people will go into this later, but um, just some mechanical control measures, fire, biological, grazing if the animal's not affected by it, and then herbicides. So some helpful websites. One is a book um, that's Toxicity of Ornamental Plants uh, to Domestic and animals and livestock. It's a book, um, but it has ornamental plants, which I think is helpful for people who may want to feed clippings or um, have their animals close to their garden area. Um, and then we have the UCNR Poisonous Plants for Livestock, livestock publication, um, which is the second one there. Uh, then we have the USDA Poisonous Plants for Livestock website, which is very helpful. And then, um, the UC and our poisonous plants website, Cal Poison, and the UC Weed Research and Identification Center that um, Rebecca had mentioned. So that's it. Thank you. I'll take. I'd be happy to take any questions.